YouTube. This is Praxis Prepper. Happy President's Day. I don't know if you celebrate President's Day other than, you know, buying a car or a mattress or something like that. But uh, for me, I'm starting a new tradition this year, and I'm going to celebrate by making wildly untrue and unsubstantiated statements. Uh, speaking of which, did you hear this morning in Florida that major, major terrorist attack? Oh, it's devastating. We really got to start clamping down on terrorists because of what happened in Florida this morning. Uh, and that's not that's not it. Uh, I mean, just the standard of life for the average American now. Did you know it's actually lower for the st the average American standard of living today is lower than the average serf during the medieval period? It's sad. I should I should tweet about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think I've kind of made up my mind. It's been it's been a month. I thought I would need more than a month of data, um, but. Uh, I know I've made a couple of Trump videos where I said, well, I'm kind of keeping my, my mind open to it. Um, yeah, you know, unless some wildly new data comes in on that. Um, it seems like the writing's on the wall there. But that's why we're preppers, right? Because so, sometimes things go crazy. Um, yeah, and they, they've just been going crazy. So I know I have some Trump supporters in my uh, viewer base. And, you know, you're obviously welcome to... Keep, uh, you know, keeping hope alive on that one. Uh, you know, as you're doing that, try not to dis disregard too much information that runs contrary to the way that you would like things to go. I mean, remember during the Obama years, and I, I was an Obama voter twice. Um, I know that there were a lot of other Obama voters that completely just ignored a lot of the stuff that he was doing, like, and I bring it up all the time, like, my worst pet peeve with him is, like, what the hell was the whole Edward Snowden thing? Like, all the liberals that I know were, like, totally cool with that? So, you know, don't get so, so married to someone that you, you ignore data to the contrary, but, yeah, I feel like I've got all the information I need on that. It's too bad. I thought some good could have come out of it, but I think it's just going to be a mess. But that's not what my video is about today. It is going to be a downer, though. I'm feeling a little down in the dumps. I just got, uh, just getting over a flu. Uh, we had a little pandemic bird flu going through the house uh, last few days. Uh, I got a little bit of a cough left from it. That's about it. Um, nice thing about a cough, though, when you have a cough for, like, several days, is it gives you a lot of uh, ab exercise. So I haven't been able to, like, really work out, but I've got this like solid six pack <laughs> after just a couple of days of coughing um but you know whatevs um yeah i'm just not feeling supercharged today so i thought i'd do a downer episode about my greenhouse and why it sucks now a lot of people have talked about how they really envy my greenhouse and i don't mean to rip into it i really appreciate having it it's winter outside today and i'm i'm Barefoot. Did I get my foot in the shot? If I did, you would have seen that it was bare. Um, so I'm barefoot out here and pretty comfortable. I got a sweatshirt on. Um, there's all the snow out the window there. I'm not sure if that's overexposed or not, but there's a big mound of snow. So it's still the middle of winter here. Um, but in the greenhouse, it's nice and warm. So there are nice things about the greenhouse, but one of the big problems with it, and I thought I'd share it, uh, share it today, is um, ooh, still a little fatigued from the uh, the flu. My arm was getting a little shaky there. Uh, one, of the, one of the problems is a moisture issue, and I've always had a moisture issue, and what happens <coughs> is um, moisture from my fish ponds, and I put lids on the fish ponds uh, in the winter time, um, but moisture still comes up out of there, and this moisture that comes up from the, uh, the gray water that comes out through here, uh, so I'm dumping moisture into the greenhouse. Uh, I also vent the um, the shower vent into the greenhouse, and the idea with that is to keep the heat in the house a little bit. But the moisture becomes a real issue, and it gets up into the roof. I've got three layers of roof here. There's this fiberglass, and then above that there's a, a layer of um, greenhouse plastic, like on a big sheet, uh, that, like the flexible stuff. It's like a bag, um, but I've got to ran a big sheet uh, of that over, and then on top is clear corrugated. So there's two dead air spaces and three layers of, uh, of some kind of solid material separating them out. Um, what, what the problem is, is that water gets up inside of these areas and then starts running down. And you can see 
it runs right down in here and then starts dripping down through these walls here. And you can see all here, even on the outside, when I do get it to drip out, sometimes it drips on the ledge and then just comes down all through this area. And it's a, a major problem uh, in here that I, uh, when I was doing the design, I just was not thinking enough about the fact that uh, uh, I had to be really careful about uh, how much humidity is in here. I've got these little vents up here, which in the summertime I keep open all the time, and then I, I made these, these little uh, doors that I could kind of put up in there and, and close them up. But this winter, I opened up every other one to try to just get some dry air in here, and that seems like it's helped quite a bit. Um, but humidity is a real concern. If you're thinking about putting together a greenhouse for yourself, um, give some real uh, consideration to uh, what's going to happen with the humidity that's in the greenhouse. Because some of it goes right up onto the surface of this, this roof right here and drips down like rain uh, onto the floor. Uh, and a lot of that you know, goes down into the walls and there's, like I said, humidity up inside of the actual uh, roofing layers that I put together up there. So that's not something to uh, uh, just ignore when you're putting uh, the thing together. Uh, I built out of wood. If I built out of metal, maybe to be you know less of a concern because you know the metal's not going to rot. But uh, this is a wooden structure, so water is something I've got to watch out for. Um, I do have one positive thing uh, about the greenhouse. Well, there's tons of positive things, but there's one that I want to share today, uh, and that is in regard to the gray water. Uh, I've done videos in the past where I, uh, I've said about how I have gray water coming down here. Uh, and it's done a great job of sort of cascading along. You can see that there's already some uh, uh, plants starting to grow here, even though it's you know tons of snow outside still. But all these plants in here are starting to grow. Uh, I've got, it's it's working where it cascades down as a waterfall. The gray water comes down here. Uh, I've got some herbs uh, kind of going there, some rosemary and oregano. Uh, and the gray water S curves down into this little uh, sort of trench here. And the reason I put the trench was so that it could kind of pool there uh, so it wouldn't overflow the sides and then go down onto the decking. Um, and I think that in addition to the fact that the gray water is giving water to the greenhouse, it's also giving a substantive amount of heat. And I've, this is the first year I've had gray water running into the greenhouse. Um, it's not the first year that I've had the greenhouse. And I've, uh, I've noticed an enormous change in the amount of warmth that's in the greenhouse. Um, and, uh, and the result of that has been these plants are growing a lot sooner. Uh, the goldfish uh, ponds never got any ice on the tops of them. Um, so the, the gray water is dumping an enormous amount of thermal energy down into all of this. Roddy is Ooh. dipping under dirt. You found a rotting clothespin. Wow. It's like an ancient treasure. Can you put it in a museum? No, no, a piece of wood. Wow, that's amazing. It's like an old artifact from another age. Back when surfs had it so good. Um, so, yeah, the, the gray water, in addition to bring water in, is bring warmth in. Because a lot of times I'm dumping out warm water from washing dishes or, you know, I'll get it out of the shower. I try to have a lot of that heat energy vent into the house, but even when I'm dumping it out, if I'm dumping it out at 70 degrees, because it's cooled down to room temperature, that's dumping 70 degree water out into a greenhouse that's otherwise, you know, would be kind of like 30 or 40 degrees. So that's a big, um, it's a big um, uh, thermal mass. Uh, to be uh, dumping out here, and uh, you know, as you know, it takes a lot of energy to uh, to heat water from 40 up to 70. Um, uh, so when I'm dumping all that water out in here, it is uh, it's carrying that that heat energy out into the greenhouse. So so that's a kind of a, an added bonus of the gray water that I hadn't really considered when I was putting it in. Um, that has been kind of nice. It's sort of helped to modulate the. Uh, the uh, temperature in here a little bit. And there's, there's worms that are active in this soil even right now. I lift up like a stone or a pot or something and uh, and there's worms crawling around down there doing their thing even though it's, uh, you know, February, President's Day. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.
Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.